Dear ladies and gentlemen, the title of my presentation is Clinical Application of Single Capture 65 Degree Wide Field Optical Coherence Tomography and Geography for Detection of Retinal Perfusion and Neovascularization in Eyes of Diabetic Patients. I have no financial disclosures relevant to this presentation. The retinal periphery is of particular interest and has been studied extensively in diabetic retinopathy. We learned that peripheral lesions predict rate of DR progression and non-perfusion in peripheral areas were demonstrated to be strong predictors of central and macular ED ischemia and also a correlation with the presence of diabetic macular edema was shown. Further, the identification of retinal neovascularization and ERMAS defines high-risk DR and therefore is crucial in the management of DR. So far, dye-based angiography was the only option for getting vascular perfusion insights of the retinal periphery, but it had the main limitation of being invasive and time-consuming. Since a couple of years, we do have with OCT and geography, a quick and non-invasive method at hand for a depth-resolved visualization of blood flow. However, we are still struggling with limited field of views in most commercially available systems. The main challenges of wide-field OCTA are a trade-off between resolution, image quality and acquisition time, with long recording times leading to problems with fixation and motion artifacts. And when we record smaller field of views to increase the resolution and stitch them together afterwards, we face the problem of long processing times and again artifacts. In our prospective observational study, imaging is performed with an advanced swept source size plexilic prototype with a central wavelength of 1060 nanometers, acquiring 1.7 million A scans per second with a depth range of 5 millimeter and an actual resolution of 9 micrometers. One main advantage of our high speed system is that the single shot makes the image acquisition a fast procedure with less than 12 seconds per volume. This is of particular importance in eyes with poor fixation and our currently used standard setting is an 18 x 18 mm field of view corresponding to a viewing angle of 65 degrees which extends way beyond the large vessel arcades as you can appreciate by the green dotted square here in this example on the right hand side. For comparison reasons the blue square depicts a 12 times 12 mm scan and the orange one a 6 times 6 mm field of view. One of the main concerns when acquiring such large field of views is a potential loss of image resolution. On this slide you can see on the left hand side a single shot 18 times 18 mm OCTA on fast image taken in about uh, 12 seconds of a patient with severe diabetic retinopathy. Let's zoom in now on this image to an area corresponding exactly to the 12 times 12 millimeter view of a commercially available plexilid system shown on the right hand side. The non-perfused areas at the top left corner are equally resolved and no loss in resolution also in other macular areas can be observed. And we can even go one step further and zoom in even more to an area corresponding to a 6 times 6 mm scan and you can again appreciate the fine capillary structures resolved in high quality without any loss of details. So far so good for the center but what about more peripheral areas? Again here I show you a diabetic patient with four regions selected outside the macular area at different eccentricities from the foveal center and in all four image sections details of capillary blood flow and non-perfused areas, particularly pronounced in section 4, are visualizable in great detail by our system without any compromise in resolution. The purpose of our study is to investigate in eyes of diabetic patients key diabetic retinopathy features up to peripheral retinal regions by single shot 65 degree wide field OCTA system in order to determine the sensitivity of detection of neovascularizations and to assess areas of capillary non-perfusion in different DR stages. We superimposed seven round areas on either the size Claros or Optus ultra wide field images, which correspond to the standard EDTRS seven fields to create 
the stage of DR, and fluorescein angiography was performed using the Optos device and served as the gold standard for detection of neovascularizations. In our clinical routine, there are circumstances, particularly in diabetics, where FA is not advised, such as in patients with impaired kidney functions, allergic reactions to the dye, or simply bad veins. However, it is needed, for instance, when the treating clinician cannot make the differentiation between an IRMA and a new vascularization by slit lamp examination alone. On the left-hand side, you can see the eye of a diabetic patient with a questionable neovascularization in the area highlighted by the blue insert. The OCT and geography B scan with flow overlay confirms clearly that no NV is present as no blood flow is detected in the vitreal retinal interface, unlike in the patient on the right hand side where flow is detected beyond the ILM. So here is another example of the right eye of a 71 year old male patient. On this slide, six lines indicate regions of interest with suspected neovascularizations based on fundus examination. The OCT AB scans revealed that four areas highlighted in red show neovascularizations and you can also clearly appreciate that flow is visible in hyperreflective structures beyond the ILM which is indicated in light blue in the B scans on the right hand side. And these regions are also characterized by leakage on fluorescent and geography images which are not shown on this slide. The other abnormalities represent ermas. In 23 eyes of 16 patients, um, we could show a leakage on FA and these leakages corresponded to near vascularizations. So we determined a sensitivity of 91.3% of detecting at least one near vascularization in our patients. The overall detection rate of neovascularizations on wide field OCTA on fast scans was 89.94% compared to the gold standard FA. Based on a montage of five 12 times 12 millimeter plex elite scans, Phil Rosenfeld's group reported that 99.4% of treatment naive eyes showed near neovascularizations within these simulated wide field OCTA images when compared to wide field FA, and they suggested that wide field OCTA may become the only imaging modality needed for identification and management of PDR. And also Caroline Bormal's group recently showed comparable results with a reported 100% sensitivity and specificity of 5 12 times 12 millimeter OCTA scans. For retinal non-perfusion grading, we created a grid which we overlaid on the OCTA on fast image. This grid consists of small quadrants, each measuring 100 times 100 micrometers, and these were used for quantification of non-perfused areas. So the definition of non-perfusion was a contiguous area of boxes without macrovasculature, which was identified by a semi-automatic approach using image shape. To describe the exact location of non-perfusion, the grid was subdivided into three areas. The most central one corresponded to the 9 EDTS grids and is called center. And the other two are concentric circles extending from the outermost circle and are defined as periphery 1 and periphery 2. In our still ongoing study, we assessed non-perfusion areas in one eye only per patient and the preliminary analysis was performed in 19 eyes of 19 patients with no or mild NPDR, 13 eyes of 13 patients with moderate NPDR, 12 eyes with severe NPDR, and 11 eyes with proliferative DR. And here you can appreciate the results of our analysis. You can see that areas in periphery 2, which encompass large parts of the mid periphery, show the highest numbers of non perfusion. And these areas increase even more with more severe DR stages. So in conclusion, single shot wide field OCT and geography with a field of view of 65 degrees proved as a reliable, quick and non-invasive method in diabetic patients, yet with a field of view smaller than in commercially available wide field FA instruments. 
Our system allowed the differentiation of clinically relevant DR features, such as near vascularizations or ERMAs, in a comparable way to Whitefield FA. The quantification of ischemic areas showed an increase of non-perfused areas with advanced DR stage and the more severely affected periphery. The Whitefield OCTA has the potential to replace fluorescent angiography as a single-shot safe diagnostic tool and is clinically useful for the detection and surveillance of PDR as well as guidance for laser photocoagulation. I want to thank all the collaborators at the Center for Medical Physics as well as the Department of Ophthalmology at the Medical University of Vienna as well as you for your attention.